So Mars was different uh, shortly after it formed. And the reason for that is that, um, you know, Mars had acquired the entire volatile inventory, the gaseous inventory that could go into its atmosphere, but it had not experienced any of the losses that um, have occurred from its atmosphere. And so it was certainly a very much uh, different uh, atmosphere and it was more massive and very likely of a different composition as well. If we think that we have liquid oceans on Mars, uh, you know, uh, for, I should say that you know this this is a habitable environment, but it's actually more than that. Um, you know, we've known since the 1950s that hydrogen-rich atmospheres produce uh, organic molecules of the type that we think led to the origin of life, and so this is more than just a habitable environment. It's an environment that is very promising from the point of view of the origin of life. But that having been said. Uh, you know, we haven't discovered any types of fossils or molecular signs of life on Mars just yet. So I think one thing we can do is try to revisit the methane problem. Um, there have been observations of methane near the surface of Mars um, by telescopes uh, on Earth, uh, in space and also by rovers. And there have also been claims that there is no detectable methane. And I think, you know, resolving this controversy and improving the observations and following the methane to the organic matter, I think is a very promising uh, way forward. So one thing that I'm working on now is um, you know, we've had this paradigm in planetary science where we look at um, Mars if we want to understand the early Earth. Uh, and that's, you know, that's a very strong um, paradigm. But there's a new paradigm that's emerging where we look at young exoplanets if we want to understand early Earth or early Mars. And one thing I want to do is to um, help discover a young exoplanet that's an analog to early Mars.